Jonah chapter 1, beginning with verse 1, the Lord gave the message, this message to Jonah, son of Amittai, get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce my judgment against it because I have seen how wicked its people are. But Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. He was on the move, but on the move in an opposite direction. He went down to the port of Joppa where he found the ship leaving for Tarshish. He bought a ticket, went on board, hoping to escape from the Lord by selling to Tarshish. And then chapter 4, verse 9, Then God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry because the plant died? Yes, Jonah retorted, even angry enough to die. Amen. I want to preach to your hearts this morning uh, from the subject called to finish well. Called to finish well well what a difference brothers and sisters what a difference between Job and Jonah what a difference between Job we preached about Job last Sunday and Jonah who we are preaching about uh, this morning you see Job finished his life the Bible says with a blessing matter of fact double for his trouble but yet Jonah is going to finish his life with bitterness. Job finished in faith, brothers and sisters, but it was Jonah who finished uh, with frustration. Job finished praying, but Jonah finished his life pouting. Job finished with restoration. All that Job had lost, God gave it back to Job and even more, and yet Jonah is going to finish his life with regret. And here's my question for us this morning, whether you're online, whether you are in the audience, how will you finish your life? How will you finish your life? Have you ever thought about it, brothers and sisters? Because if the Lord delays his coming, death is coming to each one of us. And when that time comes, when it's our time to be stretched out and to go on over to the other side, will we finish our life mad? Will we finish our life sad and depressed about what didn't happen, what we should have done? Will we finish our lives bad, living in sin apart from the righteousness of God? Or will we finish our lives glad? You see, brothers and sisters, I want to finish well. Anybody else want to finish well? I know the question was asked this morning and how I'm to realize my purpose and my, my calling. But, 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 but God is saying that we need to expand the question and here's the reason why. What a lesson from Jonah. You see, Jonah is going to teach us, brothers and sisters, that it's not enough to just know what your purpose and calling is. Is. Jonah knew that he was a prophet. It's not enough, y'all, to even do what your purpose and your calling is. But God is saying, if you really want to be effective, we must grow in our purpose and calling. That's why I want to hang my hat on this morning, that since God has called you to change lives and to make a different start with your own life, and you will finish well. I believe what happens, brothers and sisters, is that we can get so focused on doing for everybody else. We can get so focused on what God is calling us to do in the lives of other individuals until we fail to focus on ourselves. We fail to really grow. We fail to really change. We fail to really get closer to God. And when we get to the end, we end in regret instead of rejoicing. The difference, brothers and sisters, between Job and Jonah is simply this. Job changed, but Jonah didn't. Job, when he went through all of his trials and tribulation, when he went through all of his law, Job at the end is going to say, God, I had heard about you, but now I know you for myself. Jonah, on the other hand, never really changed and grew closer to God. 
And so how can I do it, preacher? How in the world can I know my call? And how can I do my call? And but how can I grow in my calling? How can I make sure that I hit all of the above so that I may finish well? Well, if you want to know, do, and grow in your calling, here's what you got to do. Thank you, Jonah, for the lesson. Number one, you got to embrace your identity. You got to embrace your identity. Jonah chapter 1, uh, verse 8 and 9. Look what the Bible is going to say. Jonah uh, gets on that boat. God is going to send a storm. And verse 8, why has this awful storm come down on us? They demand that. Who are you? What is your line of work? What country are you from? What is your nationality? Look what Jonah answered. I am a Hebrew and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land who I am who I am we need to embrace brothers and sisters who we are in Christ Jesus you see God had called Jonah God had given Jonah a purpose what did God call Jonah to do God called Jonah to be his witness to be his witness to, to speak for God to be his mouthpiece to be that ambassador so when God wanted somebody to go to Nineveh God told Jonah get up Jonah pack your bags I got another assignment for you God told Jonah, you're going to be my witness. But then God uh, had co told Jonah, you are my worshiper. You are my worshiper, my worshiper to praise me, my worshiper to give me the glory. Jonah uh, had been called to be a worshiper, but then Jonah had been called to be a worker. One who served the Lord, one who surrendered and submitted to the call and, and the purpose of God Almighty. Now, brothers and sisters, if you're watching online, if you're in here, the same is true for each each one of us. Do you want to know who you are? Do you want to know what it is that God has called you to do as a witness? God is calling every last one of us to point others to Christ, to let our light so shine that men will see our good works and glorify the Father in heaven. We are to point folk to Jesus Christ as a worshiper. God is calling us to be pointed to Jesus Christ, to keep our focus on Jesus Christ. When we come to church, y'all, uh, it's not about us. It's not about us seeing people seeing us, but it's all about lifting Jesus up. It's all about giving him the glory. It's all about making sure that we stay focused and pointed on Jesus Christ. And then as a work of brothers and sisters, God is calling each one of us uh, to really allow Jesus to point out his assignment for each one of us. I hope you get the point this morning that God has called each one of us and we simply need to embrace our identity. And so God is saying this morning, Brown, you want to do your part? You want to grow in your part? Be you. Be you. Be the unique person that God have called you to be. If anybody asks you who I am, tell them I'm a child of God. I've been bought with the price, purchased with the blood of Jesus. I'm a soldier on the battlefield working for the Lord. I've been called to worship him and to give him my all in all. As a matter of fact, y'all, we can't just worship. We can't just wait until a Sunday morning at 8 o'clock to give God the glory when you understand that you are witness and a worshiper and a worker you will do it Monday morning you will do it Tuesday at midnight you will get up Wednesday and jump online at six o'clock you will get up Thursday and Friday in other words you will do it every day because God has called me to be me and so you got to embrace your identity, embrace, be you. But not only uh, embrace your identity, here's the second thing, y'all. If we're going to know it, if we're going to do it, and if we're going to grow and change, we got to experience true intimacy. We got to experience true intimacy. I, I call this what I need what what I need. Jonah chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, the Lord gave this message to Jonah, son of Amittai. Get up! Go to the great city of Nineveh and announce my judgment against it because I have seen how wicked the people are. How close are you to God? That's what true intimacy is all about. How close are you to God? Are, are you close enough to hear his voice? 
Are, are you close enough, brothers and sisters, to know the heartbeat of God? Are you close enough uh, to really to do his will? Brothers and sisters, if we're going to know it, if we're going to be able to hear it and to do it and even to grow, what it's going to take is going to take spending time with God. You, you don't build intimacy with somebody by just dropping in every now and then. Now, if you're going to really build some true intimacy, you got to spend time with God Almighty. And what I love about the time with God, y'all, it doesn't have to be in a set schedule time, although we ought to have some set schedule time. But you'll find yourself as the deer panteth after the water. You'll find yourself panting after God and longing to be in communion with him. You get close to God by spending time with God. You get close to God by regularly talking to God. By regularly talking to God. You see, prayer is not just for the little old women uh, that maybe have gray hair and weak. No, prayer is all of our responsibility because prayer is how we talk to God and God talk back to us. And so we got to regularly talk with God Almighty. But then if we're going to really, brothers and sisters, get close to God, we got to know and study the truth of God. We got to get in his word, y'all. We got to read it and meditate it and make sure that we are obeying it. We got to experience true intimacy. Now, Jonah heard. Jonah was close enough to know what God wanted him to do but he was not so in love enough to where his heart beat was in line with God's heartbeat because when God says go to Nineveh guess what Jonah is going to say uh-uh I'm going the opposite direction oh what is God saying to us not only be you but God is saying to us get closer to him get closer to him. If we want to change, if we want to grow, we need to get closer to God Almighty. Get so close until when, John, when God says jump, you say how high. Get so close to God that when God says go, you simply says where. Get so close to God that you say, God, here I am. Use me like you want me to be used. Embrace your identity experience true intimacy with God. But then if we're going to do it, know it, and grow in it, we got to expand our involvement. Expand your involvement. This is what I do, y'all. Expand uh, your involvement because look at Jonah chapter 1 verse 10. The sailors were terrified when they heard this, for he had already told them he was running away from the Lord. Oh, why did you do it? They groan. Wow. You talk about somebody that done made up their mind, I ain't doing nothing. What God have told me to do. A lot of times folks want to talk about, I want to know my purpose, I want to know my calling. But the question is, are you willing to put it into action? We want to know it as long as it line up with our agenda. We want to know it and to do it as long as it align up with what's going to make us look good, what's going to make us shine. And No, we got to get to the point, y'all, where we say, you know what, God, wherever you tell me, whatever you tell me, my yes is on the table. And how do I do that? I got to expand my involvement. How, how do I get more involved? How do, how do I do it, preacher? Boy, y'all ask such good questions on a, on a Sunday morning. You got to, first of all, just start with being obedient to the scriptures. Folks be saying, what, 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 what my calling? What my calling? What God want me to do? The word. Obey his scripture. That's a good place for anybody to start. If you're ever wondering how it is and what it is God is calling you to do, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that despitefully use you, let your light so shine before men that they will see your good works. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Look, just be obedient to the scriptures. 
But if you're going to really expand your involvement, you got to be open to the Holy Spirit. You got to be open to the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lucy, because even in, when Lucy was praying uh, uh, this morning, Lucy was praying, God, I, I, I make us so sensitive. Give us the opportunity that we are ready at any time to give people a reason of the hope that is in us. You got to be so open to the Holy Spirit until when that waiter come to your table and God says, why don't you pray for them? You ought not look around and say, whoa, 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 wait, wait a minute. You ought to just simply say, hey, what can I pray for you? Uh, oh, I won't just call your name. Well, give me your name. So I, you got to be open to the Holy Spirit. If the Lord tell you, the Holy Spirit tell you to uh, take a different route going home. I want you to drive down this street. Maybe he got somebody he wants you to see on the other um, street. You got to be so open to the Holy Spirit until you simply say yes to whatever he says, how crazy it sounds. But then if you're going to expand your involvement, not only be obedient to the scripture, be open to the Holy Spirit, but you got to be willing to step outside your comfort zone. Some of us will hand out food because we're in a line, folks driving by, Thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you. But if God ever tell us to go to a shelter, if God ever tell us knock on the door, if God ever tell us to do something outside of our comfort zone, the fear begin to step in. But here's what God is saying. God is saying, my grace is so sufficient. That whatever I send you, what, wherever I send you, whatever I tell you to do, I'm going to give you the strength and the ability to do it. Thank you, Paul Philippians. Paul said God would not only give us the will to do it, but he'll give us the power to do it. So this morning, Brown, God is saying, expand your involvement. Sign up for Volmo. God is saying, expand your involvement. Get on the move with mission. God is saying, expand your involvement. I want you to simply do what's due. Do what's due. God didn't call us to be some bench member. God didn't call us just to show up once a week. But God have called us to do something. God have called us to roll up our sleeve. There are some folks that are down that need to be lifted. Folks that are naked and need to be clothed. We ought to do what's due. Expand our involvement. Embrace our identity. Experience true intimacy. Expand your involvement, but then if you really want to know your call and do it and finish well and grow from it, here's my last one. You got to expose any iniquity. You got to expose any iniquity. Uh, I call this why I failed, why, why I failed, why I failed. Jonah chapter 4. Verse 1 and 2. Now, uh, you, you can go back and read the whole, whole chapter. You, you know it. Uh, uh, he, they throw him overboard. Y'all remember that? They throw him overboard. The fish, God sends a fish, swallows him. Uh, it is really believed that Jonah dies. And in the midst of dying in the fish, he prayed to God. God gave him another chance. The fish swam him all the way around up the Tigris River and spit him out on the beach of Nineveh. Told him to go preach. And, and, and Jonah is going to go and preach. But he preached mad. The message was sound. But it wasn't coming from a pure heart. Let me tell you something. You can do the right thing. You can go through all the right motion. But when your heart is not in it. Now God still gets the glory. The good still gets done. But you don't get any benefit from it. Let, let, me, let me show it to you. Let me show it to you. Uh, chapter 4 verse 1. Uh, this change of plans. Because when Jonah began to preach. The people got right with God. This change of plans. Greatly upset Jonah. And he became very angry. So he complained to the Lord about it. Did not say before I left home that you would do this, Lord. To 
That's why I ran away to Tarshish. I knew that you are a merciful and compassionate God, slow to get angry, filled with unfailing love. You are eager to turn back from destroying people. Boy, the audacity. This is a hard-headed, stubborn, reluctant preacher who would dare fold his arm and get mad at God. Mm, mm, mm. Truth comes out. He already knew what God was going to do. And he didn't want to do it because he had hatred in his heart. You see, Nineveh just wasn't any other capital, y'all. Nineveh was the capital of Assyria. Nineveh, in essence, was Israel's enemies. And yet Jonah had such hatred in his heart that he was not willing to see them get saved. Expose the iniquity. Expose the iniquity. What's in your heart? What's really in your heart? When last time you had a look on the inside? I, 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 I asked the Lord last night. <laughs> asked the Lord last night, give me a sermon because, because at some point I, I want to preach about these masks. Yeah, yeah, I want to preach about, about these masks. And I, I said, Lord, you need to give me a sermon. Take the mask off. <laughs> I, I, I hope some of y'all didn't fall in love with somebody just during COVID. Because when the mask come off, you, you might discover. <laughs> Have you had a look lately as to what's really behind the mask and what's really in our hearts. I got to thinking, brothers and sisters, and, and you know what I discovered? There are certain songs that we don't even sing anymore. We don't sing songs like, shine on me, shine on me. Let the light from the lighthouse shine on him. Yes, shine on me. Let the light from the lighthouse shine on, on me. We, we don't sing songs like that because when the light starts shining, what's on the inside is, is exposed. When the light starts shining, it, it, it penetrates through the mask, y'all, and we have to see the ugliness of our, of our heart. We, we, we don't sing songs like we used to sing songs. We used to sing songs like, You know, Lord, whether I'm right. You know, Lord, whether I'm wrong. You know, Lord, whether I'm right or wrong. Whether I'm right or wrong. Boom, 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 boom. Search me, search me, Lord. Yeah, we don't sing songs like we used to sing songs. Because sometimes we like to keep it hidden down on the inside. But can I tell you something? If you really want to grow this morning, if we really want to get in touch with God, we, we got to be honest with ourselves. We got to be so honest with ourselves until we say, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of a prayer. Not 
my mother, not my father, not my sister or brother, but it's me. You got to be honest with yourself and, be, and before God. Sometimes you got to pray for some help. God, I'm in a low spot. God, I'm in a valley of despair. God, I'm getting discouraged. God, I'm losing my pep. I'm losing my zest. I, I need a little help. You got to pray for some help. Then you got to be willing to do the hard stuff. You got to be willing to do the hard stuff. Sometimes the hard stuff is getting down on your knees. Sometimes the hard stuff is having some accountability partner. Sometimes the hard stuff is just simply coming clean before God. But I need to tell somebody, if you want to, if you really want to grow, if you really want to change, you got to expose the iniquity. God is simply saying, stay clean, stay clean, stay, stay clean. I, I didn't bring you this far for you to allow the bitterness and the anger, the hatred in your heart to remain there in your heart. But oh God, search me. Oh God, search me. And if you find anything that should not be, take it out, strengthen me. You see the sad part about Jonah, he preached the revival. He preached the right message. He told the folks to do the right thing. But Jonah missed the very revival that he preached to other folks because he didn't get right with God. He didn't come clean with God. He didn't say, God, search me, cleanse me, forgive me. And because of all of that, even at the very end, good God Almighty, Jonah had the audacity to tell God, I am angry. I am angry. And not only am I angry, but I'm angry enough. I'm angry enough to die right now. But I need somebody this morning who would say to God, I want to finish well. I want to finish well. So I not only want to know my calling, I not only want to do my calling, but I want to grow in my calling. I want to get closer to the Lord every day. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleed inside draw me nearer because I want to finish with give me strength to be a soldier on the battlefield holding up the bloodstained banner I want to finish with I don't want to die before my time I don't want to get discouraged along the way but I want to finish where I want to finish where why do you want to finish well? Because Jesus, he finished well. He always finished well. I see Jesus bearing his cross. I see Jesus enduring the pain. I see Jesus hanging on an old ragged cross. Dying brothers and sisters. Shedding his blood. But all you talk about finishing well. He didn't have bitterness on the inside. He wasn't angry as folks talked about him. But I hear him say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. You talk about finish well. He died on that Friday. We call it Good Friday. Even though it was Dark Friday, we call it Good Friday because it didn't end with Friday. But early Sunday morning, talk about finishing well. He stepped out and proclaimed all power in heaven and earth is in my hands. Brown. Let's finish well. Let's finish well. Let's finish well. Finish well with no rebellion. Finish well with no rebellion. It's time to stay faithful, to stay holy, to stay obedient to God Almighty. He brought us too far for us to get full of our sins. Let's finish well with no rebellion. Let's finish well with no regrets. Finish well with no regrets. Do what you can, while you can, with what you have. 
to the glory of God. Finish well with no regrets. When that time comes, may we like the Apostle Paul said, I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. I finished my course. And there is laid up for me a crown of life. Finish well with no relapse. Finish well with no relapse. He done broke to too far. Don't you go back to that life of sin. Don't you go back to that misery that he delivered you from. Finish well with no relapse. But then finish well with no resistance. I'll say yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Finish well with no resistance. But then finish well with no restraints. Finish well with no restraints. Take the breakers off. You finish well with no restraints. Stop limiting yourself. Stop limiting our God. For with God on our side, we can run through troops. We can leap over walls. With God on our side, no mountain is too high. No valley is too low. No burden is too great. With God on our side, we are more than conquerors. And when that time comes, when I can read my title clear, till mansions in the sky, I'll bid farewell to the every care. Why? My weeping eye, I want to hear him say, Seven, seven, seven. worship me. You work for me. You witness for me. Servant, well done. Yeah! 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 Finish well. Finish well, finish well. We've been called to finish well. What an assignment, what an awesome revival. But how sad it is, Jonah ended mad, angry.